have a 2011 Jeep Liberty 42 RLE uh, transmission. And this has the uh, variable line pressure solenoids on it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to overhaul this valve body. We're going to open it up and clean it up. And I have a new solenoid pack. Uh, I have a new uh, transmission range switch. And the two um, solenoids here, the uh, line pressure solenoid and transducer, um, I do not have yet. Uh, that is coming this morning, but uh, they could be put back last anyway, or I can just put these back, you know, just for the purpose of making the video and then um, change them out when I get the new ones. All right, so let me get a little closer and uh, we'll start. But first, I want to kind of show you what happened, the reason why we got this job. Uh, this came from a uh, shop that tried to, it's a body shop actually, to try to, uh, I think the owner of the car tried to fix this thing himself. Uh, but that didn't work out too good. So let me get a little closer and let me show you what's going on with this. And then we'll start on the valve body. All right, so I'm gonna be taking this apart in a second. We'll um, uh, and get into that. But anyway, the reason why we got this job is, uh, I don't, uh, from what he was saying when I was talking to the guy, it wasn't, uh, he said the transmission is not shifting correctly. So I think what he did was reached out to somebody at Chrysler and uh, maybe got one of the techs on the phone and says, I don't, I don't think it was, uh, uh, I don't know, I think he said for like for first 15 minutes it wasn't shifting or something like that. And the guy said, yeah, probably a pump is no good. So he says, all right, I'll change the pump. So they pulled the transmission out. And uh, first of all, when they pulled the pump out of the case, the input drum had, must have came up and came out of the reverse clutches because this is the reverse clutch. If you could see it is all bent out of shape here from forcing the input drum back down and putting the pump in. And then when they put the pump in and tightened it all down, uh, the converter probably was not in all the way. And then as soon as they started the thing up, they snapped the pump gear in two here. Here is the other one, which really isn't too bad a shape, but you can see um, you know, here that the converter was not in all the way, and I couldn't even get the torque converter out. It took me uh, took me a while to get the converter out. What I actually had to do was uh, um, pull this back far enough uh, because it has the long neck on it that I could. I got a uh, a quarter inch, uh, eight millimeter flex with an extension um, in between. You know, uh, around the converter, and I got all the. Uh, pump bolts out and I was able to pull the converter and the uh, pump out together and then I uh, that's when I disassembled the you know the pump was still stuck in the converter and I was able to disassemble it but um, the uh, pump body had to kind of knock off back and forth back and forth because it was just jammed on the converter all right so that's the reason why we got that job in so whenever you pull a pump out you know, you definitely want to make sure the drums and stuff and everything is, is seated back in. And, and the way to tell, well, like, you know, while we're on the subject, uh, if a pump is in all the way, for the most part, when you, I put a couple of lineup pins in, I put the pump in, and then I put a couple of bolts in, and then I knock it into the case, you know, so it seals on the O-ring. But then as, you're, as you tighten the pump up, the pump should not be drawn down. If it's drawn down, the chances are it's not in all, or something is not in all the way. And also, if you see the, the pump getting drawn down, and then you loosen the bolt back up again, and you see it come out, then there's something going on. Um, you, if you probably also, if you turn the input shaft, it's probably not going to turn. Um, there's just a few, you know, maybe, <clears throat> maybe like, uh, I don't even know if there's any exceptions to that, except on the, some of the late model uh, Fords, like the 4R70Ws, um, that does have a, a pretty heavy spring on it, and sometimes it may get drawn down a little bit, but just got to make sure that input shaft turns, but this must have been really bad for this clutch, you know, to be like this, but there's no way that that input shaft could have turned, so I think once they started it, they just busted up the pump gears and it didn't move. All right, so let's get on to this valve body here. Uh, first thing I want to do is take the solenoid pack off and then we're going to take the um, 
the harness off here for the variable line pressure solenoids and then we're going to pull the range sensor off and the, and the rooster comb and be able to tear this valve body down. Alright, let me just turn my uh, lights back on over here. Alright, so pretty much all these uh, bolts in here are the T5. Uh, Okay, here is the solenoid pack. That is going to be changed. Like I said, I just don't have the variable line pressure solenoids or the transducer, but I have the uh, range switch here, which is an OE switch, and I have the solenoid pack again, OE only. Uh, okay. Alright, of course, to get these valve bodies, to get the valve body out of the, if you ever want to drop the valve body out of the car, you'd have to put the shifter all the way in low. Alright, so let's get this bolt out here. Alright, that's what that looks like. Sensor. And then we're going to unplug this other one here, the <coughs> pressure solenoid. Of course, they're both going to be changed. And again, the, the um, job of, these, of this uh, solenoid, the reason why they added these variable line pressure solenoids is to lower line at idle. Because these things, these transmissions like the 606, 604 have fixed line pressure. So driving an idle, you know, you got 120 pounds. So just trying to take some of the stress off uh, turning that pump and turning that converter and, uh, you know, with all that pressure. All right, here is the internal harness on these variable line pressure solenoids. I had no codes uh, for this. Uh, so I'm going to put this harness back sometimes when I have a code. Um, you know, that harness could be internally shorted. I've had that before. But this one, I, I there were no codes, so I'm not going to change it. All right, here is the range switch. All right, the inside here has flat pins versus the early style on, you know, like um, uh, 604s and stuff. There are two style switches and uh, um, there's round pins, but I'm not so sure there's two styles for, for this unit. Okay. Now the seal for the second 2-4 two, two, clutch, I should say. Okay, that's going to be changed. They come in the overhaul kit. Alright, so now this here will come right up. 
This is, of course, for the rain switch down here. And you have your seal. I'm going to kind of clean all this up over here, you know, on the wire wheel. All right, now inside there is the one two accumulator. Springs here, accumulator piston here, which we'll be changing the O rings on. It's nice and smooth in here. Sometimes it's stiff, but that looks good. All right. I'm going to turn this over here. I'm going to take all these bolts out. One thing I like to do with these valve bodies, especially that have that solenoid switch valve, <clears throat> I like to take those valves out because they are floating and kind of run my uh, bench buddies through for some uh, fine sandpaper and make sure that that thing drops in under its own weight because certainly don't want that uh, switch valve to stick. Like on the other ones with the solenoid pack, the low reverse solenoid, you know, doubles up and acts as a lockup solenoid as well. Okay. So we got a filter here, a couple of bolts here, tension plate we're going to be taking off. Another bolt here. All right, and on this valve body, we have three check balls. All right, we got, we'll, we'll get, a, I'll give you a close-up shot of this here. We got one, two, three, but there's another spot here that could take one. So if you want to mark where these tight holes go so you do not put them back in the wrong spot, let me get my center punch here. And of course, everything is going to be flat sanded. That's what I always do, but I'll do that, um, I'll do that on, but when I clean everything, just to put you guys on hold. Okay, and a little. Alright. Okay, so we have one, two, and three. some of this oil and I want to take these uh, take that switch valve out and just dump some of this here okay I'm gonna remove the manual valve and the solenoid switch valve next to that plate will come right up because there's really no tension on it down just a little bit. Okay. Alright, here's the third 
one. So we have the three plugs here. switch valve itself. Okay. All right. So we're going to flex in that. And now we're going to take the uh, separator plate off. All right. So we have a bolt here, a small bolt here. Then we have a tension plate right here. here. Okay, we got the screen here we can change. Actually is the updated style one. Alright, there's normally like a, a heating, uh, like an element here for temperature, but that must have been eliminated. And there's also a valve, a valve and a spring, but that looks like it's been eliminated as well. the stone. I'm going to flat sand this, <clears throat> flat sand the valve body, then I'm just going to clean everything up and we'll go back together with this valve body. All right, so let me just get the stone over here. solenoid switch valve back in, uh, put it back together with a new solenoid pack, range switch, clean everything up. All right, so I will be back shortly. Okay, so everything's all nice and clean. So before we get to this section, we're just going to um, put this here first with a couple of bolts, the tension plate. All right, so here's the filter that came out. We're going to replace that with the new one that comes in the overhaul kit. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have our tension plate here. Now let's get a couple of bolts there. To do now you really want to try to line this thing up so we take a couple of the valve body bolts 
and that's kind of like a lineup hole there by the uh, solenoid pack. And I put a couple in here. Okay. Out. These will come right out, so everything should be good there. All right, now what I'm doing is I'm just putting this on the back, you know, how this sits on the transmission, just to make sure everything sits flat and good, and it looks okay. Okay, so that's good. All right, so this is all good here. Just give it one last, make sure everything is good. We'll put this aside. TCC valves here. All right, everything looks good. Next thing we're going to do is put in our um, switch valve. See, that just drop right in, no problem. That's what I like. Do the check balls here. We got one, two, three. I'll give you a quick shot of the locations here because there is a possibility of a fourth one. Um, it's right next to a, a check ball. So let me just give you a quick shot of that. Uh, let me just switch angles here one second. Okay, so the check balls, we got one here, here, and here. And this one, you know, some models may take it, some models may not. So you want to be careful. This one here. All right, so we got the one, two, and three, and a possible fourth here. But this one did not take it. You know, I'll tell you, in these different transmissions, I've seen one here and not one here. And, of course, in this case, one here and not one here. And on some earlier models, there's two. So you just want to be careful with those locations on these. And the 604, this, uh, um, these, the 606s, you know, they're kind of all, all the same. All right, let me switch back and we're going to put this together. Okay, so we can actually put these two halves together here. All right, so this, I'm going to put up here like that. And then this is going to go like this.
up in this one. Okay, now we're going to very carefully, not to kill it, just going to run these down. I don't usually torque these down. To start from the center. So I got this set at about 70 inch pounds. And there really, again, there really is no set pattern, but I saw it from the center and worked the way out. seal for the 2-4 clutch. Put that in here. We're going to put our new uh, rings on the 1-2 accumulator. This is all cleaned up here. Let me just write this down. Okay. So this we're gonna catch, we're gonna catch the manual valve here, and we're automatically gonna put this in the low position. Okay, so now we're gonna put our rooster, our clicker on. Sure 
that's uh, straight there. Tighten this up. It's actually not tight yet, I just want to get this on here. Here is the new ring switch. Okay, and this is going to go like this. All right, so this little tab right here, actually, let me see if I can get this thing on. This little tab right here, you, know, you want to look, uh, make sure you put this in the correct position. This goes in the slot that the manual valve goes in. So the tab is actually going to be blocking, you know, the manual valve. Get it over there. Seal. Okay, and it's going to go, there we go, like that. Everything's lined up. Turn my light on and get that little harness piece. Okay. All right. Since we are using, let me just. Uh, Since we are using this over again, I had no codes for it. The seal, we're going to change it. Okay, this comes in the overhaul kit. And that seal is here. Okay, so that's that. Then we're going to put this on. And you really just gotta line up the bolt hole here with the range switch. And everything else will fall right into place. We're gonna put that in. All right, that is this. Bolt, bolt with this heavy shoulder on it. Okay. So we did that, let's get rid of that seal. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the solenoid pack on. Okay, so this comes with a new seal comes with a new gasket, everything like that. If you're gonna happen to use this over again, um, does come in the uh, overhaul kit. And this is gonna sit just like this. Alright. So let's get one of these in and started. Okay.
the same amount to what branch is still set on. All right, so the only thing we got left, which I don't have yet, are my two sensors. All right, I like to change these. This one has a, you know, this one I've seen fail uh, quite often, so I like to change these. And I'd usually just get these two as a set. So we got to put, when you're putting these back in, uh, this one is going to go in first. This one will go in first, and that will plug in right here, and then this one will go in last because the plug, you know, has the same, goes on the same bolt hole. <clears throat> like that, and then the two uh, small T25s that go in there. <clears throat> and that's it for this uh, 42RLE slash VLP, variable line pressure solenoids, valve body. This is a 2011 Jeep Liberty, and I just wanted to share one more thing with you guys uh, before we go. I just wanted, to, I didn't fix the pan yet, but this pan is, it doesn't look like it was hit, but it's totally bent up. So I got to actually straighten this out. I got to bang it back down. Probably what they did, or what I'm thinking is when they were taking the transmission out, they had a jack underneath the pan and it pushed the pan up. And what can happen? is of course you know in between the valve body and the pan is the filter so if this thing gets pushed up and the filter intake gets clogged uh, gets uh, um, you know uh, the filter intake um, gets pressed up against the pan the pan gets pressed up against the filter intake it's not going to take the fluid in so when you're you know working on this you know don't really you know, set anything under the center of the pen. You want to put it in a corner, you know, maybe with a block of wood, something like that. But just be careful because um, probably as they were doing that screw jack, you know, to raise this thing up, maybe to get some bolts out, to get the mount out, they really pushed this thing up. At first, when we had this thing on the lift and it wasn't moving with the pan pushed up like this, I said, you know, it's probably right up against the, the intake of the filter and, uh, you know, it's not taking the fluid in. But then as we were further checking it, uh, we realized it was probably a little more than that. So that's when we had called them and told them this thing is going to have to come out. And of course we found the pump. You know, the pump was totally, totally damaged, totally wiped out. That's the drive gear. So, all right. All right, so I got the two sensors uh, that I was waiting for and it was so busy yesterday, I really didn't have time to do anything or do too much on the bench. Um, so we're going to install the sensors, then I figure we'll just uh, install the valve body onto the trains. Alright, so let me uh, get a little closer and we'll do that. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to put this one in first. Solenoid, both a new OE.
Okay. So now the valve body is officially complete. So what I'm going to do now, let me just switch angles. I'll get the transmission over here and we'll put the valve body on. I got the shifter in low. So this is already, this is caught on this little bracket here. So we won't, this won't fall out. And then we'll move it from there like into neutral or something. Um, and we'll put the bolts on, torque the bolts down, put the filter on, and then I have to go and get silicone, the silicone, to uh, do the pan. But we'll do the valve body, and then we'll put the filter on in the pan. No gasket is used on this, you just put silicone, beat the silicone around, put the pan on. Alright, so let me just get set up for that, and I'll be right back. Alright, so we're ready to put our valve body on. Uh, we got our two accumulators. Uh, I believe it's overdrive and underdrive, and here is low reverse right here, and of course the other one is in the valve body. All right, so I'm just going to put a little grease around some of these seals. I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do is tighten two down and then I'm just want to make sure the shifter moves okay. Just make sure the shifter moves. Yep. You can hear that. It's moving okay. to 100 inch pounds.
All right, let's just check them real quick. Okay, now we got our filter, O-ring. Let's get some grease on that, put that in. Now I just got to get the, go get the silicone, but let's see how this pan is going to sit. I want to make sure it's going to sit flat because this thing was pushed all the way in. Alright, so I straightened this pan out. It looks pretty good. The thing is not loose or rocking on here at all. So the only thing I got to just do is Alright, so the only thing we got left is the pan. So I'm going to put a bead of silicone around, put the pan on, tighten the bolts up, and it's done. And that's about it for this uh, 42RLE with the variable line pressure solenoids, valve body overhaul, valve body install. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.